Hello students, let's meet today again to start with unit 15, the last unit of class 12th chemistry, that is chemistry in everyday life. So children, let us start with this chapter and let me give you the introduction of this chapter. This chapter deals with three things, that is drugs in day-to-day -day life, chemicals in food and soaps and detergents. So let us see what do we mean by drugs. Drugs are actually those chemical substances with low molecular mass which attack on the molecular targets and what are molecular targets let us see the molecules like uh, huge molecules like carbohydrates proteins lipids nucleic acids and fats can act as molecular targets and they will produce a biological response now chemotherapy you might have heard of this term chemotherapy means treatment of diseases like cancer by the use of chemicals so let us see that how can we classify the drugs or the medicines which we use in day-to-day -day life. So we can classify them on the basis of the pharmacological action. Pharmacological action means what response do they produce in our body. For example, the drugs which are used to reduce the pain in our body are called analgesics. Those which curb the allergic reactions in our body are called antihistamines. Whereas those which reduce the fever in our body are called antipyretics. Those which kill the microorganisms are called antibiotics. So this is the classification of drug on the basis of its pharmacological action. Now let us see another classification of drug on the basis of the drug action. On the basis of the drug action, we can classify drugs on the basis of the action on the particular biochemical process. For example, all histamines will inhibit the action of histamines. And what are histamines? Those which cause the inflammation and allergic reactions in our body. So, what response are they producing or what is their action on a particular biochemical process on the basis of this drugs can be classified and this is on the basis of drug action. Now let us see the third, third classification of drug which is on the basis of the chemical structure. On the basis of the chemical structure drugs can be classified and those drugs all those drugs which share common structure and have common pharmacological activity will come in one category. So this is another classification that is on the basis of chemical structure, drug sharing common structure and having similar pharmacological activity. Now let us move on to the classification of the drugs. So let me classify the drugs. The drugs are of different categories we are going to study uh, the different types of drugs involved in the chapter what are the pharmacological action of those drugs what are the examples involved and what one mark question can you get related to that particular drug so let us start with antacids antacids as the term suggests anta and acid if this this antacid drug is a combination of two terms anta and acid so it is very clear that those drugs which remove the excess acidity which is caused by excess secretion of hcl by the walls of the stomach such type of drugs are categorized in the category of anta acid so antacid are actually those drugs which will increase the ph level of the stomach and it will reduce the pain in the stomach and the indigestion will be curbed so what can we take? Just think of the examples used in day-to-day -day life. We can use milk of magnesia, milk of magnesia, MgOH whole twice. We can use eno, gelucil, digen. All these are examples belonging to the category of anti-acid drugs. So another two examples actually which are antihistamines that is simetidine called tegamet and renetidine called Zantac can also be used and remember these are better anti-acid. You get a one mark question related to this that why these are better anti-acids. Simetidine and renetidine, why they are better anti-acid than NaHCO3 and ALOH whole thrice. Now this NaHCO3 that is sodium bicarbonate when taken in excess, it will what will, what will, what will it do? It will make the stomach alkaline. When the stomach becomes alkaline, there is more secretion of HCl. So instead of curing the acidity, the acidity will aggravate. That means 
If you use cimetidine and ranitidine, it will prevent the interaction of histamines with the receptor cells and release less amount of HCL leading to the curb of acidity. So remember that cimetidine and ranitidine are better anti-acid in comparison to sodium bicarbonate or aluminium hydroxides. So let us now study the second category of drugs. The second category of drugs are antihistamines. Antihistamines are also called anti-allergic drugs because these are the drugs which treat the allergy allergic reactions in our body that means conjunctivitis which is the eye allergy ren renitis which is the nose allergy skin rashes and all the allergies produced due to pollen grains so antihistamines are what anti-allergic drugs which are used to curb the allergic reactions taking place in our body so learn the examples of anti-allergic drugs diphenylhydramine and promethazine you may use seldane and dimetap also as an example. So diphenylhydramine and promethazine. Now how do these drugs work? These drugs suppress the action of histamines by competing uh, the, with them for binding sites of receptor. So antihistamines remember are anti-allergic drugs treating allergic reactions in our body. Now let us see what are tranquilizers. Tranquilizers are also called antidepressants, antidepressants or psychotherapeutic drugs. Why are they called antidepressant? As the term suggests that the meaning of tranquil word, let me tell you the meaning of tranquil, tranquil word means peace. So this, all these type of drugs, they reduce the depression, depression caused by maybe due to stress, anxiety, hypertension, all, so these drugs are used for treatment of mental diseases which act on and they act on central nervous system. Reducing the stress, anxiety, hypertension and depression and induce a sense of well-being. So tranquilizers remember are also called psychotherapeutic drugs and they are neurologically active drugs. If you look at the examples of these drugs, these will include equinal, seconal, luminal, veronal, ip acid. Compose, amytyl, phenylzine, or else you can write derivatives of barbituric acid. Barbiturates belong to this category. Okay, so let us now see that what is the importance of tranquilizers. These are the important, these are the important constituents of all sleeping pills, and they cause the uh, uh, peace in the body, uh, resulting in the well-being of a person. So what is the cause of feeling of depression in human beings? This comes for a one mark question. So secretion of the low level of adrenaline hormone is the basic cause of depression in human beings. So tranquilizers are antidepressant drugs also called psychotherapeutic drugs and they are neurologically active drugs which are used to reduce the stress and hypertension in the person. Next category is the hypnotics. Hypnotics are the drugs which, as the term suggests, sleep inducers. So they induce sleep in the body. And they are just similar to the tranquilizer because tranquilizers just now we have seen that they are also the constituent of sleeping pills. So in this category can be included the barbiturates like seconal, luminal, veronal, amytyl. And they have the same function as that of tranquilizers. So this was the fourth category, drugs inducing sleep are called hypnotics. Now let's come to the fifth category of drugs and that is analgesics. And analgesics, what are analgesics? They are painkillers, painkillers or pain reducers and they relieve the body pain without causing any unconsciousness, mental confusion, lack of coordination, paralysis and do not disturb the central nervous system. So analgesics are simply remember painkillers and reduce the pain in the body. Now let us see that analgesics are of two types. What are those two types of analgesics we will see. So the two types of analgesics are first category non-narcotic analgesics. Non-narcotic analgesics are actually non-habit forming or you can say non-addictive in nature. 
These are those pain relievers which reduce simple skeletal pain or muscular pain or pain due to arthritis that is the joint pain without causing addiction in the body. So remember non-narcotic analgesics that is non-habit forming and in this category we can take paracetamol the common drug which we, we use in day-to-day -day life paracetamol, aspirin, flexon, disprin, phenacetin all these are the non-narcotic analgesics that means they will simply reduce the body pain that is the skeletal pain or the muscular pain. Now let's talk of aspirin children. Let me tell you some special features of aspirin which comes as a one mark question in your board examination. So aspirin acts as a blood thinner and since it acts as a blood thinner it is used to prevent heart attacks. So for all those cardiac patients aspirin is a very important drug since it acts as an anticoagulating agent. Anticoagulating agent that means it does not allow the formation of the blood clot and hence it helps to prevent the heart attack. So remember that aspirin acts as a blood thinner. Now another very important question comes in your exam and that is that why aspirin should not be taken in empty stomach. Now let us see this is the structure of aspirin children which you will learn in the chapter alcohols, phenols and ethers. So when aspirin reacts with the excess HCL secreted by the walls of the stomach, it converts into salicylic acid. Salicylic acid 2-hydroxybenzoic acid is called salicylic acid and this salicylic acid develops ulcers in the stomach which leads to bleeding of the stomach walls. So aspirin should not be taken in empty stomach otherwise it will react with the HCL secreted by the stomach to form salicylic acid developing ulcers in the stomach. So remember these two important questions related to aspirin acting as a blood thinner and should not be taken in empty stomach. So this was the category that is non-narcotic analgesic. The second type of analgesics or painkillers are narcotic analgesics. Narcotic as the name suggests are addictive that is habit forming. So these are those pain relievers which basically reduce the pain in our body and the, these type of uh, analgesics are used to reduce post-operative pain. Pains of terminal cancer, cardiac pain that is heart pain or pain during childbirth that is labor pain. So this also comes as a one mark question remember that what, what is the function of narcotic analgesic. So they reduce post-operative pain, pain of terminal cancer, cardiac pain and pain during childbirth that is labor pain. And in this category remember three examples morphine, heroin and codeine. Morphine, heroin and codeine all these are the examples of narcotic analgesics or else you can, you can remember opiates. Opiates are actually the drugs which are derived from the poppy plant that is opium and they are habit forming. So morphine, heroin and codeine. Let us now move to the second category, next category that is the sixth category of drugs called antipyretics. Now what are antipyretics? Antipyretics remember the term fever reducers. These type of drugs they bring down the body temperature of uh, they lower down the body temperature that means they reduce the fever and they lead to sweating followed by cooling. Since you all have studied that evaporation is accompanied by cooling. So the drugs belonging to this category are aspirin, crocin, paracetamol, phenacetin etc. Now one more question comes relevant to this topic. Name two drugs or one drug which can act as not only analgesic but also as antipyretic. So remember the example aspirin, paracetamol and phenacetin are the drugs which can act as not only antipyretic but also as analgesic. Okay, so antipyretics are fever reducers. Remember the term and you can frame the definition on your own. Now we move on to the next and that is next category. These are not the drugs actually. These are the chemicals in food and we will study them separately. Though let me tell you since it is here, edible colors. Edible colors are actually those chemical dyes which are used to enhance the appeal of the food. To make the food presentable, the 
edible colors are added to enhance the appeal of the foodstuffs so carotene carotene is a natural color natural dye which is of red color and tetrazine is a synthetic dye but let me tell you that edible colors are very very harmful and they are quite toxic leading to cancer in the body so next now the seventh category of drugs is antimicrobials antimicrobial drugs they are as the name suggests that they will work against the microorganisms so they are used to cure diseases caused by different types of microorganisms like bacteria virus fungi and protozoa so these are called antimicrobial drugs now these are of two types bactericidal and bacteriostatic bactericidal as the term suggests sidal means to kill so bactericidal are those which kill the microorganism and bacteriostatic as the term suggests static static means to stop or retard the growth of the microorganisms or the bacteria so bacteriostatic retard the growth and bactericidal kill the microorganisms now let us see what are eighth category of drug antibiotics now these are the drugs actually which are prepared from microorganisms and are used to kill microorganisms so these antibiotics this is also a very important category you may get a one mark question related to antibiotics and its types we will discuss now antibiotics are the drugs which are prepared from microorganisms and are used to kill microorganisms and actually categorized into two categories narrow spectrum which is also called limited spectrum and broad spectrum which is also called wide spectrum antibiotic so what is the difference between the two let us see narrow spectrum antibiotics are those which will kill either gram positive or gram negative bacteria but broad spectrum antibiotics are those which will kill or inhibit the growth of both gram positive as well as gram negative bacteria we will see the examples of all these drugs in the next slide so antibiotics remember are of two categories narrow spectrum and the broad spectrum antibiotics now let us see the ninth category of drug antiseptics very very important you might have come across this term many a times in your day to day life antiseptic that means when you your body gets a wound or a cut then these are the drugs which you apply on the body which actually kill or prevent the growth of the microorganisms and are not harmful for the living tissues that means they can be readily applied on the wounds let us view some examples of the antimicrobial drugs salvarsan which is used for the treatment of syphilis and prontosil they belong to the category of antimicrobial drugs bactericidal the remember two examples penicillin and ofloxacin bactericidal as i told you that they retard the growth of bacteria erythromycin and chloramphenicol tetracycline also comes in this category antibiotics which are of two types as discussed narrow spectrum and broad spectrum penicillin examples of antibiotics penicillin which is used for treatment of pneumonia bronchitis and sore throat streptomycin which is used for tuberculosis chloramphenicol which is used for meningitis dysentery acute fever urinary tract infection typhoid pneumonia and amoxicillin and ampicillin are two other examples now narrow spectrum remember the example penicillin next category of drugs are disinfectants disinfectants are those uh, drugs which are used to kill the microorganisms but are harmful to the living tissues that means they are used only for the non living tissues or inanimate objects and they harm the living tissues next category of drugs we will see the example in the next slide anti fertility drugs those drugs which are used to control the child birth they are the anti fertility drugs mifepristone is the example of anti fertility drug now next is the chemicals in food now chemicals in food the very first type category of chemicals in food are artificial sweeteners actually they are the food additives you might have heard of artificial sweeteners they are the food additives which are non nutritive in nature and are used as sugar substitutes for food 
and they are life saver for diabetic patients and are used to control the calorie intake. They will reduce the calorie intake in the body, artificial sweeteners. So like for example, sucralose, alitame, aspartame, all these are artificial sweeteners. Antioxidants. Antioxidant as the term suggests, they are the chemicals or food additives which prevent the oxidation of the food and increase their shelf life. Antioxidants, examples BHT and BHA. Now what are preservatives? Preservatives as you might have heard, they are the food additives which prevent the spoilage of food due to microbial growth. It prevents the spoilage due to attack of the microorganisms. What examples can we take in this category? Sodium benzoate. Now let us see the examples of the disinfectants. Disinfectants we can use Detol, Phenol, Lysol, Kamenophore, Chlorine. All these are examples of disinfectants are those which are used to kill the microorganisms in the non-living tissues or inanimate object. The examples of anti-fertility drug Mifepristone, Novastrol, etc. And these are the drugs which contain the hormones like estrogen and progesterone or their derivatives. Now, four different types of artificial sweetener. Let us see. Saccharine, which is 550 times sweeter than the cane sugar or sucrose. Aspartame. What is the drawback of using aspartame? Aspartame is unstable at high temperature. So its, its, its usage is limited only to the cold food since it is unstable at high temperature. Elitame is 2000 times sweeter than sucrose or you can say the disadvantage is that its sweetness cannot be controlled. So which is the best artificial sweetener? Remember sucralose is the best artificial sweetener. This comes as a one mark question. Why it is the best artificial sweetener? Because its sweetness can be controlled and it is also stable at high temperature. Let us see the examples of antioxidants BHA, BHT, butylated hydroxyanisole, butylated hydroxytoly. So BHA is added to increase the shelf life and prevent rancidity. In butter, BHA is added. Next example, nitrogen. Nitrogen gas, which is actually a non-reactive gas, is flushed in the packets of potato chips to prevent the oxidation or rancidity of the potato chips. Preservatives are of two types, class 1 and class 2. Class 1 will contain sugar, salt, etc., oil, etc. Class 2 will contain the chemicals like sodium benzoate, sodium metabisulfite, salts of sorbic acid and propanoic acid. So this was the chemicals in food. Now we come to the last and concluding part of the chapter and that is soaps and detergents. We have studied about soaps in class 10th also and these are what? These are the sodium or potassium salts of long chain fatty acids and it is prepared by the process of saponification. What is saponification is the formation of soap by the treatment or alkaline hydrolysis of the fat resulting in the formation of soap and the byproduct glycerol. So these are the few examples of soap you will have to learn. And now we move on to disadvantages of soaps over detergents. This also we have studied in class 10 that soaps do not work in hard water. That means they will form scum in hard water and why they will form scum because hard water contains salts of calcium and magnesium which when results with or reacts with soap forms an insoluble gummy precipitate called scum. Even soaps cannot be used for washing woolen garments. Even they cannot work in acidic water. So these are disadvantages of soaps. Let us see the advantages of soaps. Soaps are less expensive or you can say cheap. Soaps are biodegradable and hence do not harm or do not cause environmental pollution. These are the different types of soaps. Just go through them and just learn that what important uh, chemical is present to impart a specific property to them. Simply, you have to just memorize this that medicated soap contains bithionyl, which imparts antiseptic properties and prevent the foul body odor. The last part is detergents. And what are detergents? Detergents are sodium or potassium or ammonium salts of benzene sulfonic acids. And this is how soaps differ from detergent. Let us see how are detergents advantages over soaps. 
since detergent can even work in hard water so they are better than soaps they can be uh, they can be applied on woolen garments they can even work on acidic water and remember linear chain detergents are biodegradable but the brand chain detergents are non biodegradable so let us see that how can we classify this is a very very important last topic of the chapter how can you classify the detergents detergents can be classified into three categories cationic anionic and non ionic so if the large part of the detergent is bearing a positive charge it is a cationic detergent if it bears a negative charge it's an ionic detergent if no charge it is bearing then it belongs to the category of non ionic detergent now in cationic detergent the cationic part is used in cleansing action an ionic detergent an ionic part is used in cleansing action and actually non ionic detergents are used for dish washing purposes now cationic detergents are expensive and anionic are used in household work and cationic detergents remember this is very very important point that they are used in hair shampoos and hair conditioners and anionic detergents are important constituents of toothpaste now cationic detergents are brand and just now i told you that brand detergents are not good since they are non biodegradable leading to the environmental pollution but if you see that anionic detergents they are linear and linear detergents are also biodegradable in nature non anionic detergents are also linear and they are biodegradable in nature learn the examples of the three types of detergents in case of cationic cetyl trimethyl ammonium bromide in case of anionic sodium lauryl sulfate in case of non anionic esters of stearic acid and polyethylene glycol So this is all about chemistry in everyday life students and hope you have understood this chapter learn it in this way 